This is Summer. Welcome to a new landing charts video. In this tutorial, we'll make a two-dimensional pie chart. As you can imagine, creating a pie chart should be quite simple, but you might think that this must be much more complicated when dealing with programming code. Well, in this video, you will see that we only need to assign properties to one instance and, without much complication, you will be able to generate your chart very quickly. Remember that you will need the Learning Charts SDK to be able to use all the tools in this video. You can download it through the URL in the description. By installing the SDK, you will be able to access to the Interactive Examples tool, which will allow you to experiment with any of the charts from the extensive Learning Charts catalog. To start with the project, you must select the option of a new project in your Visual Studio. Select a WPF project and name it as PyChart to the example. Once the project is created, you will see a canvas and a panel of tools. If you drag the Lightning Charts tool, you will see a box with the Lightning Charts logo appear. The XML code will be updated with some lightning chart stacks. But, for this example, I would like to generate a chart with you from the scratch, so you can see what happens when you insert this tool on the canvas. If we go to the main Windows c -sharp file, we can start coding. We will start by creating an instance of lightning charts. Then, we'll create the createChart method. Inside our method, we'll start building our chart. We create an object called underscore chart, to which we will assign a new instance of lightning charts. Before we start the building, we need to stop the charts from auto-updating. For that, we use the beginUpdate function. This function also allows us to save resources optimizing our process. We assign the type of chart we want to create. For this, we use the active 3D pie view. We assign a name to the chart. We assign a title to our chart. We assign the style of the background. I'll choose the radial style, which will display a background grid. We can choose various styles like linear, radial, radial stretch, cylindrical, etc. And we assign a gradient with black color. We select pi as a style of the chart. We assign the directional lining scheme. In directional lining, the light rays are parallel and the intensity of the light doesn't dim with increasing distance. We assign the specular color to black. This means that the specular color of the object's material will react with the specular color of the light. We can assign the location of the camera, in this case, on the top of the pie. With this, we will see how the lighting changes according to the perspective. We can also assign the projection type of the camera. In this case, we use the orthographic type. This type of projection is used in scientific and engineering applications. We assign the rounding of the edges of the pie. Now, we will create the legend box. This will be filled based on the slices that are in the chart. We will assign the vertical style and its position to the background of the canvas. We will give a style and number format to the chart. We will now disable the mouse controls, as this 2D chart does not require further mouse manipulation. To add a slice, we just need to declare an instance of the pie slice object, assign its category, color, value, 
which are instance we want to assign it, and whether we want it to be visible at the startup. To do this dynamically with an external data source, you could build a loop that generates a slice with parameterized values. We will now assign border, margin, and panning properties to the chart. We finish the chart update with end update. This function will notify the chart, which must be updated since its content has been modified. We will now keep the viewing angle center on the content of the view, using the zoom to data and labels area function. Finally, we add our chart to the XML grid, which will take care of displaying the object to the user. You may notice an error in the code, and this is because we need to import the Archon library. As for the grid error, if you remember, at the beginning we dereferenced the lining chart, so we need to create a grid. If you go to the top of the code, you can see the library is imported from Archon. Finally, we will be able to observe the generated chart. You will be able to see the slides we created, graphic properties such as the gradient, transparency and the background design. The legend box is displayed as well. As you can see, the box is automatically filled based on the slides and gives us basic controls such as separating a specific slide. Well, this has been all for this tutorial. The implementation of the chart is quite fast. Obviously, your project may be complex, but in the end, the chart will only need your data to be able to be created. If you have doubts or questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you for your attention and goodbye.